So I was trying to find a video online how to deal with kind of windows uh, with indoor shots uh, and how to get everything balanced so that the outside looked beautiful and the inside looked beautiful. And, you know, I couldn't find anything really that that was helpful. Um, you know, there was lots of different things on the internet and none of them seemed to be that great. And a lot of them seemed just too difficult to, to, to do. Uh, um, things that you had to do while shooting, um, technical things that just didn't make sense to me. I just wanted to be able to shoot at a reasonably low exposure while still gaining um, good mid-tone and highlight um, detail inside the house as well as outside the house. And I, I couldn't find any video like that. So, you know, I decided to try some things in DaVinci and essentially here's what I got. So this is log footage from um, a Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera, uh, the 6K version. Uh, it was shot in uh, 4K DCI um, and uh, it was shot on a 10 millimeter Rokinon cine lens. So this is a lifestyle shot for a re real estate video that I made. And essentially, here's what I ended up with. Okay. So, um, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, it's close enough to where I was trying to get to without having to do anything crazy except color grading within DaVinci. So... Let me go ahead and just show you what I did. And and uh, yeah, I'll uh, go through this step by step. So let me just turn all this off. This first node here, I'm not gonna turn on. Uh, it is noise reduction. I don't wanna slow my computer down right now. So uh, essentially all I did was, you know, went to this uh, motion effects tab here and uh, played with the settings and uh, very minimal, uh, 4.5 on the temporal threshold. Uh, and then the spatial threshold, I just unchecked the link and then I uh, up the chroma to about 6.9. Uh, so that's noise reduction. The first node after that is my exposure node, okay? So the second I do that, you can see that the window is just, it's not bad, you know? This camera has decent uh, high dynamic range. Um, so it's not bad, but you know, I wanted it, I wanted to get it way better than that. So um, third node, was my saturation node and I bumped it all the way up to 100 because um, it's log footage and you know I could do that with this camera. So uh, bump that up. Uh, third node is gonna be kind of my like my white balance. As you can see, the walls and everything's kind of like dingy greenish yellow. I added some magenta in there. It's a little bit too magenta, but close enough. I'm not, I wasn't trying to go above and beyond on this video here, but all right, moving on. Uh, then, uh, this guy's shirt was just so nuclear. It was just bright, bright orange, and it was just bugging the crap out of me. So took that down in saturation. Um, again, if you want to learn how to do all this stuff, there's plenty of videos out there. Essentially, all I did was uh, I used a qualifier, okay? And it was very rud rudimentary. Um, you know, I didn't care too much if I got things outside of the shirt. Essentially, I just wanted to get most of the shirt Okay, and in qualifier here, you can just take your little your little eyedropper and just drag it across uh, a color that you want to get, and then you can just tweak these settings here. So, for instance, if I was to go like that, I could take away um, um, more shadows or um, from the shirt, but I didn't, you know, I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, you know, I can I can select less saturation, more saturation. Um, you know, so I could have dialed this down even better and probably gotten just the shirt. But um, uh, as you can see, um, let me just redo that. Um, after doing, uh, selecting all of this, including all this excess stuff out outside of it and blurring it out and stuff, uh, and then going in and um, in here and, you know, Bringing, bringing the the mids down and then um, you know bringing 
the hue down just a tad and the saturation down and even the, the luminance hue versus luminance down a little bit uh, I was able to you know get this shirt to where I wanted it without affecting really anything outside of it um, so it, it doesn't always matter if you don't need the most perfect selection in qualifier it, you know you can select a, a few things outside of the box here um, and a lot of times it'll it'll have a good it'll have a benefit uh, towards the shot um, so that's a shirt and then I did skin tones okay not perfect but better um, you know brightened them up uh, added a little bit more um, contrast and uh, color boost or uh, it took the color boost down a little bit I guess it could have brought the color boost up on this actually just a tad that'd be a little bit more natural um, essentially also did a qualifier on this uh, and as you can see it's not perfect but it's close enough I guess I could have tweaked it even more here um, so that uh, this dude's face wasn't so um, um, blotchy but there you go close enough so from that to that and as you can see I don't care if I select stuff outside so much so it popped this area here on the placemats here and you know some other areas in the shot uh, were also impacted I think it actually makes it look nicer so I don't worry too much about getting the most perfect qualifier selection it's you don't want to spend all day on this stuff especially if you're not getting paid that much um, moving on uh, this shot was the window so let's get over to the window here okay so essentially what I did was I did two um, two nodes here okay the first one was dropping the exposure down okay and again I'm not too picky uh, I, I obviously used a power window, um, but um, the main thing I did was a qualifier, and I used a loom qualifier, okay? So I selected, I tried to select just the brightness of the window here, and I could have taken it down even more, um, but essentially I wanted to get the entire, everything within this scene of the window, so I didn't care if I got the edges of the window here, I just wanted to bring the exposure down on the entire window without affecting anything else in the shot, okay? So I used um, qualifier to do that. Um, then once I brought the exposure down, um, what I did was uh, I wanted to make the sky pop more and, and get it more blue. So what I did was I copied this node here, okay? Created a new node. And then I pasted it on here, okay? I reset the primary wheel correction that I did, and I reset um, the curves adjustment that I did on, on this node, okay? So that was gone, okay? But the qualifier was still there, okay? And then all I did was I adjusted it to get less of the window, okay? And just the, just the, the very top highlighted parts I didn't want to get the entire window right because then you know everything would be blue so I just got you know enough so that I could pop that sky especially in this corner here where it was pretty much white um, and then what I did was I offset it to towards the blue channel okay and again this isn't perfect but it's close enough for me to where for my client and for most people watching this who aren't going to be that detail oriented when they're watching footage um, like editors are like you and I um, so for me this was perfect um, you know I could what I could have done was um, masked it out even more so that it didn't get the shades here and then um, retract it if I had to but it looks like the tracking was fine so uh, again um, I had to, you know, I had to use a, a mask here so that every all the highlights on the bottom weren't affected, only the skyline, okay? So uh, I masked it off there, okay? Um, and yeah, that was the window. And I think from where it was to now, amazing. Looks great. Uh, the rest of the stuff, uh, I did some masking of the face to... Um, 
to pop the actors a little bit more, okay? Um, and then, let me just move this over, sorry guys. Um, and then, this one was, um, the ceiling was looking really yellowy. So, because of the lighting, and I kind of wanted the whole scene, the whole all the walls to be closer to white. So what I did was I used a gradient mask, okay, just for the top ceiling area, and then I took um, I took the saturation and and down, and also the color boost down, and it just kind of leveled it off towards towards more unsaturated white look. Um, this one. Um, was there was an area in here uh, and again i could have made this better guys uh, obviously i could have made this better but i really what i wanted to show you is you know what could be what can be done in davinci um really with not getting so or like detail oriented and just like going you know frame by frame by frame you know trying to get this as perfect as possible because most people who watch videos like this commercials and stuff they're not going to notice this stuff. They're just going to see that it looks beautiful and they're not going to see all the little minute details that we may see like, oh gosh, look at that blotch there or that blotch there, you know? That's not something they're going to notice. So you can get away with a lot um, and you don't need to get so, you know, put so much effort in getting so detail-oriented with this stuff and taking up so much of your time. Um, so what I did um, here... Uh, let me remove this. His shirt was just so neon that it was bouncing off of everything. And I wanted this color to be over here as well. I didn't want the orange bouncing off. Now, that was just, I didn't have to do that because like I just said, most people aren't gonna notice this stuff, but I did and it was kind of bugging me and I knew I can get rid of it without a lot of time, so I did it, okay? so. I took the saturation down, I added a, uh, a power window, tracked it. Uh, I could have made it better again, but again, I just wanted to do this really quick style. So um, I, I could have um, done a few more things here, like brought the luminance up even more to kind of get closer. But as you can see, the more I go up, the grainier it gets. So I didn't want to go too far on it. So, um, so there's that. And again, you know, noise reduction is not on right now. So, of course, zoomed in, it's going to be pretty grainy. But um, so uh, that fixed that for me. Uh, and then all I did after that to get this completed into my eyes is I added sharpening and I added just a touch. You don't want to do, overdo your sharpening. Um, I went from 50 down to 40.47. And, and that seemed to do the trick. Uh, it usually does. I never really go past that. Uh, and then after that, I added some grain. Just go in, went into my effects and uh, I added, um, I think about, I think it was like 35 millimeter, 400 T. And then I just upped the strength a little bit in the grain size. And that was that. So if we just fit back out here and get rid of this, I'll go ahead and put my noise reduction on again and I will turn everything off. So from that to that, and I'll go ahead and play the shot. It's gonna skip a bunch, but you'll get the point. So there it is, guys. Um, I I know there's probably somewhere out there, someone out there trying to accomplish the same kind of look and, and hasn't really gotten any the results they want. I strongly urge you to get DaVinci Resolve. It's free. You can get it on their website. Uh, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that I have in this version because this is the studio version, but it's $2.99. You pay once and it's yours for free and it comes with a whole suite of tools from editing, which 
this was all done in Final Cut because that's what the client wanted. But I just moved the, an XML over into DaVinci, then graded it in the color tab. And this is where all the grading happened. Uh, it also has a visual effects tool called Fusion. And then it has an audio um, editor um, called Fairlight. And um, you can deliver all of that out into a slew of different formats here. So um, again, this is DaVinci Resolve. This is uh, version 16, the studio version. Um, but like I said, it's free to, to learn and to, and to you know, test out and um, I just wanted to kind of show people if you're looking to get shots like this especially if you're doing real estate I mean this has been a game changer for me I do this all the time with my shots now and it's it's the clients love it and um, yeah it's not perfect but in my eyes it's good enough and you know works for me and it works for my clients so anyways, guys, I hope this has been helpful. I know I didn't get too in detail as to like step-by-step step how to do this stuff. Again, there's tutorials out there that'll show you how to do that. But this is kind of the process of how I got the, the log footage into this. So hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.